This is a highly requested video, so today we're going to give you the complete step-by-step -step guide on how to import your dog into the USA from any high-risk rabies country under the new CDC guideline, which goes into effect August 1st, 2024. Last year, we actually flew our dog into the United States from a high-risk rabies country, and we shared our first-hand experience in this video above. And right now, we are in Dubai, which is located in a high-risk rabies country, and we are currently going through the process of importing our dog into the United States again. So we've studied the new regulations in depth and we're gonna share them with you right now. Now the new CDC guidelines are going to make things so much more complicated for one particular group of pet parents, but they are actually gonna make them even easier for another particular group of pet parents. So you may be wondering, why are the rules changing in the first place? It seems that the purpose of the update is to ensure that pets vaccinated outside of the United States are properly vaccinated. And actually, according to a letter issued by the CDC's Department of Health and Human Services, the main reason for these changes are because of the high number of fraudulent and falsified documentation. In fact, they have actually mentioned that in 2020, the CDC observed a 52% increase in the number of dogs that were ineligible for admission due to falsified documents. And in 2021, there was an additional 24% increase to the year prior to that. So yeah, the new rules are definitely aimed to combat falsified documents and to ensure that all pets are truly vaccinated. So with the new rules, you will definitely want to make sure that you are prepared. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you watch this video all the way to the end so you don't miss a single step. Now you can find all of the relevant download links in the forms mentioned in this video in the description section below. Now before we get started, my name is Larry and I'm one of the co-founders of Podega, an online holistic pet wellness store shipping all across the United States from our warehouse in Texas and even offering worldwide shipping to over 100 countries. So without further ado, let's talk about importing your dog into the United States. Under the new rules, dogs that have been in a high-risk rabies country within the last six months before the date of import are going to be split into two different categories. So category number one, dogs vaccinated for rabies inside the United States with a valid rabies vaccination issued within the United States. And category number two, dogs vaccinated for rabies outside of the United States. All right, so let's quickly start with category number one. Dogs that have visited a high-risk rabies country within the last six months at the time of import into the U.S., but have a valid rabies vaccination that was issued inside the U.S. So if your dog falls into this category, then the import process is very simple, and you can consider yourself to be incredibly lucky. So listen carefully, because here is how you import your category one dog into the USA. Step number one is going to be download the form called Certification of U.S. Issued Rabies Vaccine. And then you're going to send it to your veterinarian to fill out. You can find the download link in the description section below that you can share with your veterinarian. If for whatever reason you cannot get this form filled out by your vet, you can also use a USDA endorsed export health certificate which you would have received when you exported your dog outside of America. Okay, step number two is going to be download the form called CDC Dog Import Form and follow the instructions listed on this form. Step number three is going to be to check if you will need an FMD and screw worm certificate. Now, this is actually not a requirement of the CDC, but is a requirement of the USDA. Whether or not you will need one of these is going to depend on which country you have visited. So we'll speak more about the FMD and screw worm certificate later in this video, so be sure to check that section out. Now that's pretty much it, but there's one more thing that you need to know. If your dog's US issued rabies vaccination expires while your dog is outside of the US and your dog has been in a high risk rabies country in the last six months at the time of import, then you will actually fall into the category two of dogs and you will have to follow an entirely new set of rules. So you'll need to continue with this video. Now guys, before we move into the next session, if you are enjoying this video, please do give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It really, really helps us to reach more pet parents and it means the world to us if you just gave this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Now let's talk about the category number two of dogs. Now, most of you will probably fall into this category, which means that your dogs have received their valid rabies vaccination outside of the USA, and the dog has visited a high-risk rabies country within the last six months prior to 
the USA date of import. So listen carefully because you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you watch every single step so you don't miss any important information. Okay, so now here is the step-by-step -step guide on how to import a category dog two into the United States as per the new CDC guidelines. Now, we've actually listed this in chronological order, but you should really, really listen to all of the steps before you start this process. So step number one is to check if your dog has a valid rabies vaccine. So the first action is to check your dog's vaccination booklet to make sure that your dog has a valid rabies vaccine and that the vaccine is still valid at the date you intend to import your dog into the United States. Now, if your dog's rabies vaccine will expire before the intended date of import, then you would actually need to revaccinate your dog as soon as possible. This is because you will actually need to wait 30 days after the vaccination has been administered before you can continue with the next step. So step number two is the rabies titer test. Now under the new CDC guidelines, having a rabies titer test is now optional, but, and this is a huge, huge but, we highly recommend having this. If you do not have a rabies titer test, your dog will actually need to go into quarantine for 28 days. And you better believe this will be at your expense. So definitely get the serologic rabies titer test done for your dog, which by the way, has to be done at one of the approved rabies laboratories. Now here's the list of all of the approved laboratories for rabies serologic testing. And if you don't see your country here, you can go to your local veterinary and they will very likely be able to send the blood sample to one of these approved laboratories. Now we have done the serologic titer test for our own dog twice already. We went to a local vet who took the blood sample and sent the blood work to an approved laboratory. Now for us, receiving the results took about two to three weeks, so you'll definitely want to factor in this time as well. Now you also want to keep in mind that the blood sample for titer testing needs to be taken at least 45 days before traveling to the US. And the rabies serologic titer test document is valid for one year. All right, moving on, we're gonna to get to the third step, and this is definitely the biggest update to the CDC requirements, and one that makes everything so much more complicated and expensive. Okay, so you're actually going to have to make an appointment at one of the CDC registered animal care facilities and receive confirmation of your reservation. So you need to know that your dog can only enter the US through an airport with a CDC registered animal care facility. So you actually need to make an appointment at the animal care facility before arrival into the US, where your dog will actually need to be examined and vaccinated. At this moment, only the following airports have CDC registered animal care facilities, JFK in New York, ATL in Atlanta, LAX in Los Angeles, MIA in Miami, IAD in Washington DC, and PHL in Philadelphia. It does look like more airports may be available at a later date, so visit this link in the description section called CDC Registered Animal Care Facilities and have a look at the updated list of airports. When you click on the airports, it's going to show you some additional information about the import process at that specific airport. So for example, it looks like JFK is only accepting dogs as manifested cargo at the moment. Damn! Wow, this is really, really upsetting because personally, we do not want to fly our dog in cargo. Plus, this will definitely increase the cost of imports since you will probably need to hire an importer and an exporter to handle the manifested cargo. So if you're able to fly into a city that does not require manifested cargo, that can save you a lot of money and a lot of stress. As a side note, we do have experience flying our dog in cargo one time as well as inside of the cabin multiple times and I will 1000% will choose the cabin every single time. So once you decide which airport you will fly your dog into, you will need to email or call the CDC registered animal care facility at that airport to make an appointment for your dog. Another tip is to make a reservation two to three weeks in advance. So I would probably do this as soon as you get the rabies titer test results. So I've actually emailed all of these CDC registered animal care facilities to find out more information about the appointments and the cost of the process. And honestly, I have absolutely no worries. Like, oh my goodness, they are about to be making so much money on dog parents. And, and honestly, I cannot believe this. 
Okay, so here are some of the costs that the CDC registered animal care facilities are charging for the exam and revaccination of these dogs. So New York is charging an estimated $1,368. LA is charging $1,400. And the charge in Philadelphia is just over $1,100. Something else you have to consider when planning your dog's import is that it seems that the reservations are likely to be done within certain business hours. So for example, the representative in Philadelphia informed us that the appointments can only be made within certain working days, Monday to Friday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Effectively, this means that if your dog arrives after these working hours, then the dog would need to be in quarantine for that night. And please note that if your dog arrives towards the end of the working day, you may still need to quarantine your dog for the night. So do make sure to speak to the reservation team to see if your dog would actually need to go into quarantine or not. Now also, if your dog arrives after 5 p.m. on a Friday, then your dog will actually stay in quarantine until Monday. And in case you're wondering, every night they stay in quarantine is also chargeable. So to avoid quarantine, your best bet is to get a flight that's scheduled to land around 9 a.m. so that you have enough time for unexpected delays. So this new rule requiring the category number two dogs to see a veterinarian and be revaccinated upon arrival is a very, very costly process for pet parents. So before you move on to step number four, make sure you have received a confirmation of your reservation at one of the CDC registered animal care facilities. So step number four, download the form called Certification of Foreign Vaccination and Microchip and send it to your veterinarian to be filled out within 30 days of travel. So the requirements for your dog are going to be that they have to be six months old and have had an initial rabies vaccine at or after 12 weeks of age or a rabies vaccine administered on or after 60 weeks. All right, so let's click on this document here. And again, I will have all of the relevant links for you in the description section below. So all of this information needs to be filled in and we recommend double checking this to make sure that there are no mistakes on here. Our veterinarian actually filled out this form by hand and made a mistake and crossed it out to fix the mistake. But when we submitted this document for an import permit, it actually got rejected because of the crossed out number. So we had to go back to the vet to get it filled out again. It wasn't a huge problem, but just make sure that this document is correct before you submit it to the CDC. So step number five, complete the CDC import form. This step is super simple and quite self-explanatory. So download the form called CDC dog import form and follow the instructions listed on this form. Step number six is going to be the FMD and screwworm certificate. Now there's one more document that you will need in order to import your dog into the USA. For some strange reason, this is not mentioned on the CDC website, but it is mentioned on on the USDA website, so I will put the link down below. So this is an FMD and screwworm certificate, which states that your dog is free from foot and mouth disease and screwworm. So you just have to click on this link and simply check if your country is free from foot and mouth disease and screwworm. If the country your dog has visited in the last six months is not free from foot and mouth disease and screwworm, you actually need a certificate stating that your dog is free from these diseases. So we actually have done this before. So we just had to go to our vet and request this document. So I actually could not find a template for this online. So feel free to take a screenshot of this letter that our vet created for us last year. So if you require this FMD and screwworm certificate, then this needs to be done within five days of arrival into the US. So step number seven is an export permit. So depending on the country that you will be exporting your dog from, you may be required to obtain an export permit in order to leave the country with your dog. Now, you may want to check with your local veterinarian or a pet relocator to see if you will be required to obtain this document. Okay, wow. That was a lot of information to go through. Now, you know everything you will need to go through in order to import your dog into the United States from any high-risk rabies country with a foreign-issued rabies vaccine. Now, I must mention that the rules and regulations may change at any time, so it's important to know where to look for the most up-to-date information. So to find the correct regulations, visit the CDC website, 
and I will again link to this in the description section below. So this page is very helpful in finding out which steps you need to follow in order to import your dog into the United States. So now we're on this page bringing a dog into the United States. So we're going to launch the dog bot and it's going to open up this chat at the bottom. We need to agree to the disclaimer. Boom, I agree. And now we simply need to answer the questions in this form based on our individual dog. Now it's asking if the dog is going to be at least six months old and has an international organization for standardization compatible microchip at the time of travel. If your dog has been microchipped, it will likely meet the standard, but you can check with your veterinarian on this. So we hit yes. Now it's asking if the dog has been to any of the following rabies country within the last six months. You can expand the list to see if your dog has been to any of the mentioned countries. So let's have a look. It's a pretty extensive list. So yes, the country my dog has been in is the UAE and we'll go back up to the top and say yes. Next question is, does the dog have a current valid US issued rabies vaccine that was administered by a veterinarian in the US? So we're gonna say, no. So now here we are receiving the most up-to-date information for my category of a dog that has a valid rabies vaccination issued outside of the US and has visited a high-risk rabies country within the last six months at the time of import into the US. Let's answer some commonly asked questions that we have received from you guys. So number one is going to be how long does this process take? It is definitely the top question that we get. So if you want to avoid putting your dog into quarantine, then most of the waiting time revolves around the rabies vaccination issued in the foreign country. So if your dog is required to get a new vaccine before traveling, then it's important to note that this is a minimum waiting time of 30 days before you can even do the serologic rabies titer test. After you wait the 30 days, then you can take the rabies serologic titer test, and then you have to wait 45 days until you are able to import your dog into the United States. That means if you need to issue a new vaccine, you'll have to wait a minimum of two and a half months before you're able to import your dog into the United States. If your dog's rabies vaccine is valid and will still be valid at the time of import into the US, then the earliest you can enter into the United States is 45 days from the rabies titer sampling date. So after you get the results of the rabies titer test, I would make a reservation at the animal care facility as soon as possible because this may take a few weeks to get a confirmation. So another commonly asked question that we receive is how much will this cost? Now the answer to this is really going to depend on which airport you fly into and whether or not your dog will need to fly in as manifested cargo or they're able to fly in the cabin. So if your dog has to fly in as manifested cargo, you will be required to work with both an exporting agent and an importing agent. In addition to the documents and the title test that will need to be done in a foreign country, this can cost a couple of thousands of dollars. Now, if you can fly into a city that does not require a dog to be flown in as manifested cargo, then you will save a lot more money. So let's look at the example of flying our dog inside the cabin from Dubai to Los Angeles. The cost of issuing all the relevant documents needed to enter into the US, including the veterinary business in Dubai, will cost us around 640 US dollars. And then to make the reservation at the approved CDC animal care facility in Los Angeles is going to cost us around $1,400. So this means in total, this sums up to about $2,000. $40. Now let's take a minute to talk about the topic of revaccination of your dog that arrives into the United States. So the CDC is actually requiring dogs to be revaccinated even though the dogs have a valid rabies vaccination plus a rabies titer test that proves that the dogs have enough antibodies. This is literally the definition of old vaccination. And if you have been following us for a while, then you know that we take a holistic approach to pet wellness, which includes the responsible vaccination and not over vaccinating our dogs. And with these new CDC regulations, the only way that you can avoid having to revaccinate your category dog too at the time of import into the United States is to take your dog to a low risk rabies country for six months prior to the entry of the US. Since most of you are probably not going to be able to do this, we are going to share some ways to prepare your dog for travel and to help avoid vaccine side effects. Now, if you're going to revaccinate your dog at the airport, it is important to proactively prepare your dog's immune system for vaccination. 
Now our favorite natural products for this is going to be Fidus Flora and Rebalancer by the Adoric Beast. And we're gonna explain why. Fidus Flora is the world's first canine specific probiotic and has been scientifically proven to balance the immune system. Vaccinations as well as stressful travel can challenge the immune system. So you definitely wanna make sure that your dog's immune system is supported and balance. So we recommend starting Fidus Floor at least one month before your travel. In addition to this, Rebalancer is a must have. It is a homeopathic remedy that actually helps to reduce the risk of adverse reactions, helping the body process the vaccine without removing any of the potential benefits of the vaccine itself. This would be administered to your dog right after the vaccine is given and for two days afterwards. Now you can get these products on podega.com. We actually ship worldwide to over 100 countries. And if you want to learn more about how to prepare your dog for a stress-free and healthy travel, then make sure you check this video up here. Now guys, I know that was a lot of information, but we hope that you found this video very helpful and we hope that you're clear on what to do next. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It really does help with the growth of this channel and helps us to continue to make more informative videos just like this one. We're going to be traveling a lot this summer with our dogs, so do make sure that you subscribe to follow our travels. So if you have any questions, do make sure to drop them in the comment section below. So see you guys. Bye.